a devoted wife to Byron Green, a loving mother of four, and grandmother of three. Adrian is a native of New York. She moved to Atlanta, Georgia over 30 years ago. She has a Bachelor of Science in Alternative Medicine. In the past 25 years, Adrian's ministry has touched audiences in churches, auditoriums, coliseums, parks, and on television in the United States and abroad. Her ministry has reached dignitaries, governors, mayors, bishops, pastors, lay people, and even the homeless. Amen. Now I want to present to you this mighty woman of God, evangelist Adrian Green. Amen. She comes the message today is adorned with holiness. Amen. The Lord is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And in order for us to go back with him, how many people want to go back with the Lord? How many people really want to go back? I, I believe I came from heaven, and I believe that um, when he comes to get me, I'm going back to heaven. Right. Amen. This place here on this earth is just a very temporary, temporary place. Amen. But our soul is eternal. Amen? Amen. And that's the part that is going either to heaven or to hell. And I definitely want to go to heaven. Amen. Amen. That's my motivation for everything I do is to go to heaven. It is to go back to be with the one that created me. Amen. Amen. I don't do anything other than for that purpose only. I'm here for that purpose. I'm not here for anything else. Just to do what the will of God is. Jesus even said, I didn't come to do my own will, but I came to do the will of him that sent me. And I come the same way to do the will of him that sent me. So we praise God for that today. So, adorned with holiness. What does the word holiness mean? Have you ever thought about that? Holiness. Well, I looked up the definition, just so I could give you a good definition. I looked up the Webster's definition of holiness, and then I looked up the King James Dictionary version of holiness. Well, this is what I got. Holiness. The state of being holy, purity, or integrity of moral character, freedom from sin, sanctity, applied to the supreme being. Holiness denotes perfect purity or integrity of moral character, one of his essential attributes. One of his essential attributes. How many of you all want to be like God? Do you really, really want to be like God? Okay, let me, let me try this. How many people want to be like God? Let me see your hands. Okay. The reason I want to be like God is because if I'm not like him, I can't go with him. Okay, that's the only reason. It's not to be a show or that has nothing to do with it. But he has called me to be holy. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. Amen. And so because of that, that's the reason I want to be holy. That's the reason that I strive to be holy. So today we're going to learn about adorning ourselves with holiness. Amen. Amen. Okay. If you go with me in the scriptures to 1 Peter 1 and 16. And I have a lot of scriptures, so if, if, if you don't get to turn to them, I'm, I'm going to try to wait for you to get to them. Um, 
but for the sake of time and us just moving through to get an understanding. You can jot the scriptures down and read them at home if you'd like, or you can read them now, whichever, you know, is going to work for you. Okay, 1 Peter 1 and 16. The word of God says, it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. So see, that is a word from the Lord. He has asked us to be holy because he's holy. That's the only reason. Okay, so holiness is a requirement. Holiness is something that we're supposed to be. It's not just a good cliche, but it's actually something we're supposed to be. The word of God also goes on to say in Exodus 15 and 11, it says, who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness? So if we're trying to be like God, the word of God tells us he's holy, so the word of God tells us to be holy. Now, how do you get holy? Does anybody know how to get holy? Anybody? Good deeds. Well, the word of God says, you are saved by grace, not of works, least any man should boast. But faith without works is dead. That kind of sounds... You know, like, oh, okay, what? But it really makes sense because it's our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our dependence on him is what makes us holy. Not just our deeds. A lot of people think, I'm going to heaven because of my deeds. No, I'm going to heaven because I have relinquished myself. Okay? My heart has been changed because of the blood of Jesus. I've received him as my personal savior because my deeds could not save me. The law could not save, and that's why God sent his only begotten son, so that whosoever believes on him would not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? So being holy is being in a state where you know it's not about you, but it's about Christ in you. A lot of times we will say, okay, today I'm going to be righteous. Today I'm going to be holy. Today I'm going to do what the Lord is telling me to do. And then there are other days when we say, oh, no, I'm just going to, I'm going to do me. I'm going to do what I feel like. I'm going to put on myself today. But the Lord says to put on him, Christ crucified. See, because it's not about us that lives, but it's about him that lives in us. Always remember, say, Lord, 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 it's not about me, it's not about me. but it's about, you in me. it's about you in me. Every day, if we would get up and put on the righteousness of God and not ourselves, then we will walk in that day knowing that God is being glorified in us. And it's not us. Because if we continue to live, he's not going to come back and get us. Because he's looking for a bride. He's looking for someone likened unto himself. Without spot or wrinkle. So in order for us to not have spot or wrinkle, we must put on holiness. Amen? Amen. And the blood of Jesus is the only thing that can make us holy. We as people, we spend more money, more time, more effort in adorning this outward man. But did you all know that everyone in this room, without this flesh, we all look the same. Amen. Every soul looks the same. Hallelujah. The physical appearance of the soul looks the same. But look at the time that we invest. Look at the time we put into this outward man satisfying and satiating the flesh versus how much time we put into our soul. Did you ever think about that? How much time do you really invest in the part of you that is God's? And how much time do you invest in the part of you that is the flesh? That's really something to think about. Because you will know whose you are by the time you spend with him. If you spend more time doing the things of the flesh, guess what? That's where your heart is. 
And the word of God tells us where your heart is, is where your treasure is. The word tells us to set your affections, your heart, on things above. I probably think about heaven more than I think about anything. I realize that this world is not my home. It's a place of transition. It's a place where I'm just passing through. So the word tells us to set your affections on things above. Sometimes my, my husband and my children, they say, you think too much about heaven. You need to think about here. And I do think about here, but I think more about heaven. I really do. Because that's where my eternal state is. Do you realize that we only have about 70 to maybe 90 years here? And then after that, the judgment. After that, eternity. Eternity is a long time, my brothers and sisters. You know, our lives, the word of God says, our lives are like vapors. That means we're here and we're gone. And one of the tricks of the enemy is to make us think, well, I've been here, I'm going to be here. The human being is the only cre creature that has not really grasped his shortness of this life. We think that we are here and we're going to be here, but not so, not so. Our investment of our time, our energies, our efforts should be there, there. Because if we're planning to go there, then that's what we need to be focused. Everything about us needs to be 